Good night and welcome to Tech Talk. I am your host, Yuri Alpuche. For a few weeks now, we've been talking about technology as an important tool in the fight against climate change. Today, we wish to get into technology's role in our own food security. We are used to being able to go to any market or grocery store and finding the things that we need to cook our famous Sunday dinner, rice and beans, chicken and salad. But little do we know, technology is heavily relied on for us to have some of these foods always available, especially chicken. To find out more, I'd like to welcome to our show tonight, Mr. Raymond Bartman, General Manager of Quality Poultry Products of Spanish Lookout, and Andre Salgado, the Belize City Branch Manager. Welcome to the show, gentlemen, and thank you for being here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about quality poultry. How long ha has quality poultry be been in existence? Well, its roots actually go back to the late 60s or mid 60s. Uh, that's when the community first started back then. And um, they were experimenting with chicken, remember, just locally, of course. I mean, in themselves, they were, it wasn't for retail or wholesale. And then in the 70s, it started picking up. And then in uh, 1975 is when the Quality Poultry Products logo actually came into existence. Okay. But the history dates back since the 60s. So it's since the 60s. Wow. That's a couple decades in existence now. Yes. What are the products that Quality Pro um, Products produces? Uh, we produce, um, well, of course, as the name suggests, uh, chicken um, in all parts uh, right. and um, as well whole chicken but we also do turkeys um, we are one of the largest supplier of turkeys as well oh, okay interesting i understand that the company works as a cooperative with farmers can you explain that mechanism all right it's pretty simple what we have is 138 farmers um, they are roughly scattered across a 10 mile radius i should say and then simply how this works is the farmers are the shareholders of quality poultry products. So oh, nice. um, uh, well, how this works is that the profit stays in from the farmer for seven to 10 years, and then they get paid the profits out every seven years. So this is how the operation works. We can get use the f owner's money for seven years until we have yeah. to pay it back. <laughs> oh, wow. And how many chickens does your plant produce now versus when it first started? Well, we can go back from one, but no, <laughs> <laughs> probably from one to five, but no, right. roughly uh, the previous location where Caldy Poultry started, probably at that plant they were doing roughly about a thousand, from thousand to two thousand. Okay. So right now we're at 30,000, so that is the difference. Oh, wow. 30,000 chickens a day. Yes, ma'am. So how many chickens is that a year? Uh, <laughs> so much. It's millions. <laughs> what is it? A seven, couple million. Seven wow. something. Eight. Wow, that is a lot indeed. What technology does the company have to be able to produce this capacity of chickens on a daily basis? Well, um, it starts from, I mean, obviously, even the trucks already <laughs> that they can drive on the road. It starts from right. the trucks. We got the automatic dumping system where we unload the chickens from the truck onto the uh, chain and then it automatically dumps the chickens into it they slide into a conveyor and okay. from there they go into the factory so that's the start of, of where technology comes in before uh, the, the guys had to dig into the crates bent over way at the bottom pick up the chickens one by one and so, then put it on yes yeah. and then put it on so now they just go on a conveyor and off they go wow so when the farmers used to have to do it manually, manually versus how it's done now, I mean, how many chickens are you, what is the difference between the number of chickens that you're processing? Well, before all this technology came around, I know that a big shift when technology came was at 3,000. At that time, if, if the, the, the way it was done more with hand, then okay. 3,000 was a full day already. Okay. And uh, that's kind of, <laughs> that, yeah. that's how, how technology advances, obviously, in, in, in the poultry industry. Right. Well, I'm sure viewers are anxious to, to take a little peep as to how this, um, this technology is happening in your, in your factory. Let's take a look. Every Sunday, a majority of Belizeans look forward to a hot plate of rice and beans, chicken and salad, our world-famous national dish. 
To allow us to enjoy this tasty, traditional meal, farmers are always busy making sure we have enough fresh chickens to eat. The Quality Poultry Products plant in Spanish Lookout is responsible for processing 25,000 to 30,000 chickens daily. To accomplish this, they depend on a state-of-the-art production plant where most of the work takes place. Before entering their HACCP, HASOP, and Baja certified plant, employees and visitors are required to wear proper attire to decontaminate themselves to ensure that no outside contaminants are introduced to the plant. The first step is when the chickens are dropped off to the plant and are automatically unloaded. There, they are gently placed on conveyor chains and stunned to ensure they do not suffer distress or feel pain as they are slaughtered. The chickens then pass through an evisceration and cleaning room, where they are mechanically plucked and all of the unwanted parts removed by a vacuum. They are then thoroughly washed with chlorinated water to remove bacteria. The chickens then enter a cutting and processing room. The room is chilled to reduce the chances of any pathogens being born. There, a conveyor chain automatically reads the weight of each chicken and drops them off at specific packaging stations. Some are bagged whole, some are cut and placed in trays as assorted chicken parts. And of course, the Wings packaging station is responsible for Friday evening delight for most Belizeans. After the chickens are bagged or placed in trays, they move to the labeling station. Here, each bag or tray is labeled with a lot number and other information stored in the system. This is essential for the traceability program. It ensures that the factory is able to know where each product is at any given time before being purchased by the final consumers. After this, they are sent to a chilled room as they await being shipped out in chilled trucks. Products to be stored overnight are placed in a huge freezing room at automatically controlled temperatures at zero degrees Fahrenheit or less. The coolers and freezers are all controlled by an advanced cooling system. This entire production process takes only a few hours. Consumers are then able to enjoy fresh chicken in their tamales, caldo, barbecue plate, and the countless other Belizean dishes that feature quality, fresh chickens. It's always really impressive to see state-of-the-art equipment um, and people working behind these equipment right here in Belize. How long did it take you to get to where you are at Quality Poultry? Well, um, again, since the 60s, <laughs> it, right. has been, uh, it has been, uh, yeah, I mean, we've just evolved. So pretty much in the 60s, that's when the start was, 75, we got the name Quality Poultry Products in the early 80s is when the first major factory was built for Quality Poultry Products, okay. probably roughly 80, 81, 82. And then we pretty much worked around it, of course, adding extensions. And then until 2015, when we decided to take HACCP uh, seriously, that's when the whole factory changed. I mean, we, we started from one, literally one end, extended from this end and went all the way through. So. Since 2015, all the technology we have there today, the latest addition has definitely been since 2015 So you now. really transformed within the past five years. If we were to count when you started with Hazup up to where you are today. Yes, tell very, very tell much. Tell us a little bit about Hazup. What is Hazup and how important is Hazup for a quality poultry? Here you go. <laughs> so, well, you know what? It is a surety that your food is safe. How um, the HACCP program is a food safety program, which stands for Health Analyst Critical Control Point. So there's monitoring stations all along the line. There has to be paperwork to prove that things were done right. And obviously, as you saw, the gloves, the hands, the hairnets, the helmets, right. that is so that, that we can assure that nothing goes into your chicken. You don't want to cook your chicken and find a hair or a finger, uh, I mean, the ring, <laughs> finger ring, right. and, or anything in there. So obviously, they gotta, that is part of the safety right. program. Right. So it's a lot of health and safety happening to ensure clean food, yes. um, safety of the employees, safety of the food that we're eating. What does this do for a company like Quality Poultry in, ter in terms of giving you a competi competitive advantage or opening any opportunities to be able to export your product into other markets? 
Well, the whole world is, HACCP is the gauge in the poultry processing plant where you're gauged by if you can export and pretty much all markets, if you don't have HACCP, you cannot export anywhere in the world. And the HACCP is the gauge to where you have a product that the whole world knows is a safe product. Right. So therefore, it is essential. Right. You have anything to add to that, Andre? Uh, no, he, he really captured everything and again, um, especially particularly in the Caribbean, it's very important that we, you are certified. Right. And um, of course, yes, uh, it's a gateway and it's something that Quality Poultry has been, um, in, in, has had planned for a while right. that, you know, the, the export market is there now and we have, do have access to it now. Okay. So the people behind um operating the equipment and technology at Quality Poultry. They're all Belizeans? Yes, yes. every single one of them. All 403. <laughs> 403 <laughs> employees, wow, that's a yes. lot. Well right. done. And um, of course, you know, we, we have to say a special good night to our IT team, um, Helmut and Jacob. Nice. And those are the two guys that actually, you know, have to ensure that everything is in operation every day. They're the I brains mean, and hands of right, the operation. Right, at the branches, if, if one computer screen goes down, it's, it's an emergency. And so those guys have to jump <laughs> directly into action. And so, you know, we have to send a special good night to them. Excellent. How has the training experience been with training everyone? to be HAZAP compliant and to be able to operate these systems? Actually, very good. This is something I dreaded a lot more. When we started with the HACCP program, everyone has to have training. There's a mandatory, uh, every six months, every employee has to have training. It, it has to be documented. And um, this was something I was um, worried wouldn't go as smooth, but I got to <laughs> give a shout out to our staff. They took this challenge on like it was their own. They owned it and it went so much smoother than I had ever imagined it could go. Excellent. That sounds really good. Now, looking at the entire process of the point where the chicken is grown at the farm to when it's picked up to when it's dropped off at the factory to when it's processed, um, is there any automation happening at the beginning in from the farming techniques to when it's delivered to your factory? Is there any technology happening there? No, um, the, well, uh, actually, can I just um, jump in there? Um, again, technology is anything that, that would entail a mechanism. Right. So uh, at the farm level, all, all of the feeders, um, well, for some of the farmers, most of the feeders are on a timer, right? right. So it's uh, all the feed automatically drops in the feeders and the, the chickens eat. Uh, and again, it comes to the, the water system. Everything is on a time a time as well. So yes, there is technology. It's, it, we, it wouldn't be as top technology as you would expect, but yes, it is technology in, in reference to the farms. Right. And then when it comes to the factory, then of course, yes, everything is fully automated. Everything is fully automated from there. And on the topic of HACCP, the farmer, ha again, HACCP is our record keeping system. You have to be able to prove, show, record what happened. And the farmer has their own record as well in the, in the barn that they at the end of the cycle, they have to bring us the paper and it gets documented in, in our yeah. plant as well. So. Oh, excellent. So even the farmers got trained and they have their role to play when it comes yes. to yes. HACCP certification. Very much. It yes. was, How was that experience? It was, it, 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 it was hard on them. Um, actually, what we did is uh, we still have it going. We started a system. If the farmer filled it out, they would, we gave them $50. If they didn't, we charged them $50. Oh, so wow. to get the, so to get reward, to, to the certification. Reward, reward program. System. Right. And that's been working. Yes, right. that has been working. How many farmers do you have again? 135, you said? Wow, so you had to go through this process with 135 farmers. Right, and um, one additional thing in the barn, you know, let's go back to the barn, right? Okay. Automated system. Um, some farmers have a missed system set up in the barn. So when it gets too hot, they, um, there is a fan that blows mist of water on the chickens to keep them cool. So again, wow. it, it's technology, again, it, it's all there. It's just that, you know, probably we, we don't see it as technology, but I mean, it, it's an amazing it's system. It's innovation. Right, um, and Maybe. I know there was a company who wanted to do that for the um, for Expo, <laughs> to have a mist, mist system spraying. So again, you know, technology. Okay, excellent. So you said, you're exporting as yet or not as yet? Um, is that in the pipeline? Yes, any at all? very yes. much in the pipeline. Um, Grenada is the closest country that we're still working with. Okay. And the registration is taking place as we speak. In fact, there will be a meeting 
on Thursday morning on this, and I'm not sure, but we're, we're getting very, very close. It's, it's almost it. there. Excellent. Well, that song's really great so far. Great stuff so far, guys. Viewers, we will now go to our first commercial break. When we return, we'll continue with our Sunday dinner tech talk. Tech Talk is brought to you by the Public Utilities Commission. Good night and welcome back to Tech Talk. I am your host, Yuri Alpuche. We continue, we continue our business conversation with our guests from Quality Poultry Products, a company that has been a part of our pat patent Sunday dinner for decades now. Before we continue with our BizTech discussion though, let's take a look at another edition of Street Tech. What are the six letters on the top of a standard US keyboard? Is it A, A, B, C, D, E, F, B, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, or C, inputs? B, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, QWERTY. B Q W E R T Y. Query. Q W E R T Y. Query. B Q W E R T Y. B Q W E R T Y. B Q W E R T Y. What computer device can be used to create a digital copy of a printed document? Is it A a monitor, B a printer, or C a scanner? C a scanner. I would more than likely say C scanner. C scanner. C scanner. C. Scanner. Which of the following components of a computer is most likely to determine how fast it works? Is it A. Its USB 3.0 hub, B. Its processor, or C. Its graphics card? B. Its processor. B. Processor. B. Its um, processor. Processor B. B. Its processor. Another great one. If you are unable to guess the answer correctly, let me help you out. The first six letters on a US keyboard are Q, W, E, R, T, Y. It's easier to remember if you sung it out QWERTY. To create a digital copy of a document, you can scan it. And the component most likely to determine a computer's speed is its processor, since it is the computer's most central brain. And that's it for our street tech answers. Earlier, we got in to enjoy a vi video overview of Quality Poultry's automated system, um, showcasing all the technology advancement happening at Quality Poultry. We were discussing at the point of when the chickens are farmed and what technology exists there, up to when the chicken is picked up and delivered to the factory. Can you walk us through what happens after that in terms of walking through the entire process to your factory and the different technology components that are in your factory? Okay. Yes, so, um, so it starts where we left off, where they get unloaded and right. un put onto the chain. And after that, they, go, they get stunned, as, you, as the video said, and where they don't feel any pain. And then <laughs> they go through the hot water for the plucker. That's the first room. Right okay. and now with HACCP, each each room has to be lower than the first. So that there's no cross contamination. This room can never cross contaminate into this uh, into another room. So then it goes into the second room, where uh, all the staff has a different attire than room three, which we're gonna get to again because the employees are uh, cannot switch the rooms because again of cross contamination. Right. right. So then it goes to eviscerating, which is where. Um, all the stuff gets taken out that you don't want in your rice and beans, or most people don't want in their rice and beans. I guess we could say China might be a little bit different, but um, so further than that, then it goes into the third room, which is what they call the clean room, because this is where the packing happens. So after it goes into the chiller, where it is chilled down 45 minutes in ice cold water, like we continue to have agar feeding ice. So oh, when, wow. the, when the chicken comes out of the chiller where you saw it on the chain, then it's already completely chilled down. Mm. So, and, and as you saw the process, after that, when it gets bagged or put into the cuts, it's still completely chilled and then it goes into the cooler where it stays overnight and then it goes into our refrigerated trucks and 
to be delivered. Sammy's to the branches. Excellent. We saw in a video, Andre, we saw in a video that the, in the, there's a component installed in the production line conveyor belt, to be precise, um, weighing the individual chickens. Right. How important is weighing the chickens? Uh, that's very important. And actually, um, that system uh, is uh, from Drenkwa. Okay. All right. So um, that weighs every single individual chicken as it goes along, uh, and it goes to each individual. Um, we have several packing um, areas in the factory. Mm -hmm. So, um, like tables, we call them. What's the the word for it? Six unloading. Yeah, six unloading tables. Correct. And so, um, you know, right now in Belize, and uh, the way it works is most restaurants they they don't really specifically go for weight, they just go for a size, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's how important it is because then we have to ensure that each chicken has the same size, right? I see. So some people want 3.5 pounds, they want, uh, they only want it in a range of 3.2 to 3.3, so mm -hmm. of course that, that's how important that one is. Okay, so it's been driven by the demand of the, your the clientele. Right. Definitely. That's kind Very of what guides so. that, Very how right. you so. weigh or what, what what are the parameters that you're looking for when you're weighing? That, that very much drives the technology because putting the sixth table means completely adding an addition onto the chain. And this I is, see. remember, this is completely consumer driven at right. this point, right? Because right. we cannot do it with three tables at this point because right. the varieties don't, don't match up. So yes, definitely. Mm. Okay. Another cool component that we saw in the video was the stamping of lot numbers on the bags, on the containers. How, it, how, is, how important is that? What does that mean exactly? What does that do? Very, very, that's very important. So each farmer gets a number, each barn gets a number. Okay. There is farmer number, barn number, and this is how it comes to, remember on the same paper that I was mentioning before that the farmer has to fill out. So that process gets all coded into numbers. So if next time when you look at your bag, we will know from which farmer it came from. Um, what time it was processed, and this is as this, again, this is a safety, this is a HACCP safety recall that if there ever Food something safety. went wrong, that we can recall right. the chicken. So it's a traceability system. Yes, right. it's a traceability system. Right. Yes. And, and that's one at the that's one at the factory level. Then when the chicken reaches the branch level, then it's a, a, a totally uh, different process as well. And we have a, a, a software called a batch tracking system. Mm. Right, and um, it has to be updated every day, and that goes for every individual store mm -hmm. you deliver the chicken to. So, for instance, if we deliver it to, to one of the biggest supermarkets in Belize, then um, each sales team has to ensure that that code is written down on the receipt. And then we, I have a personnel that enters that into the into the into the system to ensure that uh, again for traceability purposes. So we can literally track a chicken from barn to consumer, to consumer. or to retail store or to Chinese store or to right. whatever store we do deliver or restaurant, right? And again, yes, it comes back to traceability. Should should something would go wrong, then yes, you know, we can always know exactly where it came from. And again, it goes down to freshness as well. I mean, you know, you we can know if you come and you tell us, well, you know. Something wrong. Something is wrong with, with this product. You know, we can always go back in the system and said, you know what? Well, we know that was delivered on X day and it was processed on Y day, and so there shouldn't be anything or uh, uh, wrong with it, or you know, um, something is definitely wrong probably along the line or at, at the, the the supermarket or at the store. So then, you know, we as well can adjust to, to ensure that whatever product you're receiving at your home is is the best product possible. Excellent. And this data is kept forever or is there a cutoff time that you dump the data? <laughs> no, not, not, not yet because I mean, we, I mean, I don't know how long it will go because um, we started this room, we started this HACCP program, started getting to it in 2015. Right. So this traceability program has only been running for two and a half years or so, so we don't have a long record I see. yet. So. I see. Well, I was just so, but, curious to know. Yeah, but no, I'm sure that there will be a year eventually where there is some cutoff time. And obviously so because remember that uh, the, the chicken and bleeds we, we don't store, we right. don't stock, so it's, it's a fast turnover. So yeah, I guess after three, four weeks we could actually discard the information because it would all have been eaten right. already. So. Right. Besides the HAZAP certification, is there any other certification that quality poultry has? Well, I mean obviously Baja, obviously we have to keep in line with um, DOE because of the influence that, I mean, the whole process uses a lot of water and so obviously it goes back to the creek. We have to make sure it's cleaner than how when it came in and all that sort of mm. stuff. I mean, that all requires a lot of paperwork as well. Mm. 
And then Baha certifications. Yes, you know, Baha, Baha has some certification, that is correct. What are those exactly? No, you see here in Belize, Baha is the HACCP certification right. authority, okay. right? I see. So that is what they do. Okay. So when, because uh, when we started the HACCP program, I got um, some contacts from um, Beltrade. They gave me four kind of one from Europe, one from Jamaica, one from Mexico City. I emailed out of them which company could, could help us with this. And we ended up with a company out of Mexico City. And that is, and, and they're the, they are the HACCP team that uh, kind of gave us guidance and so forth. I and see. so that's long story short. Right. <laughs> Uh, another major component of food safety is ensuring that you have the right temperature. Yes. And you explained that every room has its different um, yes. standard, right? And That's different right. handling um, criteria. In your freezer, as we saw in the video, there were some really cool gadgets happening in there. Can you explain a little bit about how that works? All right, so the freezers that you saw there, that is what they call a rack system, which is beautiful in the refrigeration world. And I'm gonna quote the, of course, this is the salesman of the refrigeration. <laughs> they call that the Mercedes of the refrigeration <laughs> equipment because of the technology. So how those motors work, each one uh, has a drive and it can, it just uses it just uses one motor, it can speed and slow down the motor according as needed. Right. And if it needs a second one, the second one starts slowly. So, and if it needs a third, it goes to the third and the fourth. So each motor varies with speed according to what is needed. So this is a huge um, electricity saving. Right. right, so you guys program what is needed. Yes, well, it does everything itself. Everything right. is programmed in the computer that, I see. It, that it goes on and off only as is needed, right? I so, see. so we never lose any wasted energy anywhere. I see. All right. Well, and move in from the factory, uh, again, um, all, all the semi-trucks okay. that transport the chicken from uh, throughout the entire country, all of them has uh, their own ther um, thermal king, okay. uh, which is a, a unit, a, a cooler, a freezer unit on the trucks. And then when it's delivered, so each branch, each branch in itself um, has a refrigeration unit. And, and it goes down all the way to the delivery trucks. Each delivery truck has their own individual thermal king. And, um, yeah, so everything is kept at, at, at a standard temperature. Okay. Last week we had the Ministry of Agriculture as our, our guest, and they emphasize the importance of um, water. Oh, wow. And this is a problem that they're experiencing, yes. we're experiencing throughout Definitely the country. <laughs> <laughs> is, is your operation dependent very much on a lot of water? A lot of water, um, and, and, and we can back it up to wherever we want to. Obviously, we wouldn't exist if we didn't get water, and, and the chickens use a lot of water to begin with at the, at the growing stage, right? right. Yeah. And then our processing plant, we have our own water system, which uh, we've upgraded as well very much lately. So when the water comes, we put it through some uh, spinners that take out the mud, goes into one pond, and then there's a series of 12 glass filters that it goes through first before it goes to the second pond, and from the second pond there's another filtration system that puts it down to 10 microns, right. and then it goes to the factory. Wow. And then, so there we needed to clean the chicken, to wash the floors, to sanitize the whole processing plant after processing, and of course remember the chiller where the water, we need a lot of water, now where it gets even more complicated. So this washer, there's a lot of water that passes through the plant, now, obviously, after the water leaves the plant, there's another series of one, two, three, four ponds of a cleaning process mm. to make it clean again, like how it was, to put it back in the And you guys measure the, the quality of the water before it goes back? Yes, 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 yes. No, because remember, this has to be food grade quality, right? I got you. Because okay. you see, remember, the, and we haven't, we actually, for the chiller, where the chicken isn't that an extra system yet because this is literally the water touching the chicken so it mm. has to be food safety, it has to be water you can drink Purified. as well, right? So. Right. right, and we do send samples to Baja um, and they do... They do spot uh, checks, do spot I would imagine. As, yes, that's and right. they have records. All right. Nice. Is there any other technology component happening at Quality Culture that you would like to add? Well, I mean, the next big one is that this is, this is happening in a few months. We're going to put up solar. We're going to see how solar works and, and try to be a little bit green, green, green. and see how we so can... So solar to power the entire plant at Spanish Lookout. We will, yes, that's true. That is the aim. That is the aim. And then eventually all the other branches. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> that would be nice. I guess depends depending on how it works for you yes. because you have a lot of different equipment with different 
voltage happening. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. That's very progressive of quality poultry. So yeah, that is the next big project that we're going on. Thank you very much. Well, we're at the end of our BizTech segment. Is there any other words you'd like to leave our viewers with before you leave us tonight? Andre? Uh, well, from my perspective, um, I'd just like to say, uh, you know, thank you to all our customers. Thank you for everyone that has been supporting Quality Poultry throughout the year. Right. Throughout the years, um, you know, yes, we love you. <laughs> yes, this stuff for we chicken, but at the end of the day, this is your chicken. And so we do strive for excellence in everything we do. We do strive that to ensure that whatever you get is the best quality, cleanest product in the league. Excellent. Raymond? Well, yes. Well, I can't say it much better than what Andre said there, but and I don't know if they have this footage, but we are doing something pretty exciting in the near future, and we have not posted this bag on anywhere, in, or, or, or nobody knows it's coming, but sneak I did peek. send a sneak peek <laughs> picture if they're going to show it. We do have a new bag coming out for whole chicken, which we are really excited about launching. We think it's such a great improvement from the previous one, right. and this will be coming out very shortly, so look out It's a new packaging. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you as well. Viewers, we now go for our final commercial break. Stay tuned. Tech Talk is brought to you by the Public Utilities Commission. Welcome back to Tech Talk. Tonight's BizTech was eye-opening and appetite-inducing. Quality poultry products did a fine job walking us through their advanced production processes. Well, the show continues and we now go to Corey for some tech news. Our phones are our convenient computers allowing us to work while on the go. Understandably, it can be nerve-wracking when you're trying to respond to your manager's emails while on the last 15% of battery power. Hello guys, I'm Corey and as promised, I have all new tech news. Microsoft Outlook has joined the dark side, and that's no Star Wars reference. Outlook, as we know, is a part of the Microsoft Office suite of programs. Most importantly, it manages all those Hotmail.com and Live.com email accounts we use. Well, the new Outlook dark mode has arrived and is available for both Android and Apple operating systems. Both versions will feature a switch to turn on the dark mode, but for Android, it will switch over automatically when power save mode is activated. Yes, dark mode gives your interface a sleek and cool look, but it actually does way more. It uses up less battery life and RAM so that you can work for longer periods of time. And I have even more good news. Outlook isn't the only Microsoft app that's getting dark mode support. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, SharePoint, OneDrive, Planner, and even To-Do for Apple's iOS 13 launch are next on the list to include this feature. Speaking about dark, we have for too long been experiencing frequent road traffic accidents, with many a few of them occurring at night. But could you imagine that even in space, accidents are increasing? This week there was almost an accident between SpaceX satellite and a European satellite. Luckily, space agencies have their own space traffic police dedicated to tracking objects in outer space, and the European Space Agency was able to employ an evasive maneuver to prevent the two satellites from colliding. Over the years, space junk and our orbit's increasingly crowded traffic has increased the occurrences and likeliness of space collisions. So the next time someone says, it's a bird, it's a plane, you can interrupt them and say, it's a satellite going a little too fast. And finally, last week I teased that I would share cool tech news in relation to climate change. Climate change is attributed to high carbon emissions from Earth, and researchers have found that the transport systems on Earth contribute 23% of carbon emissions. To be honest, I saw a bus last week that's probably responsible for 22%. But anyway, a great solution entertained was the use of electric buses instead of the diesel and the gas bus. The big problem? It would take six to eight hours for their batteries to be recharged. Well, that is about to change. Scientists believe they found a solution in a supercapacitator. This new technology, they claim, 
can allow for a bus's battery to be recharged in the same amount of time it would take for a car to fill up its tank at a gas station. This is great news for the planet, great news for the transport and automobile industries, and hopefully news for me in that I hope my Samsung phone could benefit from this technology. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed and continue to enjoy Tech News, courtesy of RFNG Insurance Company Limited. Until I see you again, goodbye. Great job, Corey. I am not a pessimist, but I will have to see to believe that an entire bus battery can be recharged in under five minutes. That would definitely be a game-changing technology and something that can make ripples all across the auto and tech industries. We now go for a short commercial break and we return with Tech Tips. Tech Talk is brought to you by the Public Utilities Commission. Welcome back. Now we turn it over to Alana for this week's Tech Tips. Sometimes being on your phone can be a little exhausting, and sometimes it actually ventures into the realm of addiction. Hello viewers, it's me Alana, and I'm here to bring you this week's all new tech tips, sponsored by Digi. My tech tip for tonight is address your phone addiction. So I talk on this show a lot about how technology has limitless wonderful ways to make your life easier. But I'll also be the first to admit that all that convenience and accessibility can become dangerous if you let it go unchecked. Phone addiction is actually real, and it can be harmful to your health, your focus, and your happiness. Obviously, I'm not saying that phones are evil devices meant to make you unhappy and ruin your social life. But sometimes we can get a little bit carried away. If you find yourself checking your phone every minute, even when you haven't received a notification, here are some steps you can take to keep yourself mindful of the time you spend plugged in. Step one is to identify the problem. Yes, obviously it's your phone. But what are you doing on it? Are you mindlessly scrolling through your Twitter timeline? Are you getting sucked into YouTube playing video after video? Playing a game you can never beat anyway? Or are you checking to see if your crush has finally answered your text only to realize that you've been left on red? Whatever it may be, remember that admitting you have a problem is the first step to solving it. Step two is to set limits. Instagram, for example, has a timer that notifies you when you've been using the app for a certain amount of time. iPhones also have an option to lock whichever apps you want after you spend too much time on them. For Androids, you can download a little app called Off Time from the Google Play Store. Like Apple's built-in function, they allow you to choose how much time you'd like to spend on your phone and then they block you from accessing those pesky apps once you've reached your limit. They also include helpful data about how much you use your device and what you spend most of your time doing. The third step is prevention. Temptation to pick up your phone and lose an hour in it often comes in the form of notifications. You hear that familiar little jingle and your hand probably instinctively reaches for your home button. My advice is to turn off as many notifications as you can. Maybe limit it to calls and texts because you know you're gonna check your email all the time anyway. Of course, these measures are also tremendously helpful if you have a child who you believe spends way too much time on their phone. You don't have to feel helpless. And just like that, today's edition of Dr. Alana's Tech Tips is finished. Be sure to look out for more next week. Until then, Goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Alana. I agree. Phone addiction is a thing, and it's actually more commonplace than we may recognize or accept. It's very likely that the majority of us reach for our phones as soon as we wake up and stay on it, pretty much until we close our eyes in the night. A lot of employers have had to be creative to ensure that their employees spend more time working than scrolling on Facebook. And even in church, we continue to see faces looking down on phones. 
Indeed, it has its own health risks in addition to disconnection from normal social interaction. So if it applies to you, I hope Alana's tech tips was useful. And just like that, we're at the end of tech tips for tonight. And tech talk. I would once again like to thank our guests, Mr. Raymond Bartman and Andre Salgado from Quality Poultry Limited. I also wish to thank Corey and Alana for their continuous great job at delivering us news and cool tips from the world of tech. And of course, thank you to our sponsors, the Public Utilities Commission, Digi, and RFNG Company Limited. Note that our next episode of Tech Talk will be on Tuesday, September 24th, and that will also be our final episode for season one. Until then, good night and do enjoy all of the September festivities. Mm -hmm.